Remarkable Wrestling Podcast. What the world is watching. And hello, everyone. It's time for another edition of the Remarkable Wrestling Podcast. And if you're watching, you know, say hello. Eventually, I do want to film a really cool intro for the Remarkable Wrestling Podcast on 1980s style, where it's like, hey, be talking about all the collectibles and all the memories and all the stuff that makes us professional wrestling fans. This is such good. Shit. Look at that little pip squeak. Look at that from the WWE fan club. Ultimate Warrior wristbands. He was like, you like wrestling? I was like, hell yeah, I do. It was Lumberjack Jim. I made up wrestler. Think Hacksaw Jim Duggan, just Lumberjack. Did you use a backbreaker in a fight at Grand Oaks? He runs a promotion during his lunch break. <laughs> that what cracks me up. All right, hello everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Remarkable Wrestling Podcast. And uh, we're getting near Halloween. I know WWE Hell and Cell is tonight, and so I want to thank everybody for tuning in and watching. Because we got a good show tonight. We got an excellent guest. I can't wait to bring her on. And of course, I got my 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 mar- remarkable shirt here today. It's Chris uh, Chris Jericho's AEW a little bit of the bubbly shirt, and I'm ready to go. I got my wall of marked them behind me, and I'm all set to go. Uh, so my guest at this time is okay. One of my cats just knocked down everything. Uh, what <laughs> one of my my guest right now is is. You know, a true Texas bombshell, one of my favorites to ever work with. And she is a former RCW women's champion. I want to bring in Barbie Hayden. Barbie, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, of course. Thank you for having me. Also, I saw the, uh, or I heard the cat knocking something over. And I feel like being a cat mom, that's the most accurate, like, intro I could humanly get. Is a cat just messing something up somewhere? (laughs) <laughs> yeah like, her name is patches and, and she is cute she's a princess oh my but bitches. yeah she was like oh the show's starting right now let me jump up onto something and knock it right. over." yeah if i were at home right now um dd would my cat dd would definitely be just walking across the screen and screaming at all of you <laughs> absolutely <laughs> well well she may also make an appearance too so Perfect. who knows <laughs> So Barbie Hayden, so great for you. So great, first of all, to see you again. I know it's been a long time, um, yeah. you know, and it's been a long 2020. And you know, but I guess first, like, so what's been going on with Barbie Hayden? What are you doing? What have you been up to? Um. So, whenever I left wrestling, it was because I was actually making me jump over to circus. Um. I work for Spiegel World. Um, the company that I work for is called Atomic Saloon. So in our realm of shows, there is Absinthe, Atomic Saloon, and Opium. They're all here in Las Vegas. Um, but I actually originally got moved over to Scotland. Um, that's where we made the show, developed our characters, and then actually put it on stage uh, for the Fringe Festival over in Edinburgh, Scotland. And we ended up getting Best of the Fest. Uh, most attractive cast. Uh, we got, I don't know, we got like all these like really cool awards and all this stuff. And then we moved the show over here to Vegas, uh, debuted here in Vegas. And uh, we ended up getting uh, named like the must see show of 2020. Of course, we see where the fuck 2020 went. That was, you know, so I guess that doesn't even matter anymore. But um, we got like best new show in Las Vegas, which I thought was really, really cool. And yeah, so I've been doing that. Whenever the COVID thing started back in March, um, they did release all of us. Obviously, shows couldn't go on. So they released us right away. So that way we could get unemployment, yada, yada, yada. Um, I can't sit still to save my life. Clearly, I'm even talking with my hands. But I decided during my time off, you know, during COVID that I would explore other options uh, for work. And just anything to keep myself busy. So I actually ended up coming up with a, a patented item um, 
that company just launched and we're doing pretty well. So that's really cool. So that's what I've been doing most of my time here in quarantine is I've been, I've been developing a company. Um, so I'm now a business owner, CEO, which is really cool. Um, aside from that, I have actually been pursuing something that I've been really, really wanting to do for a long time. I'm a huge car person. Like I'm such a car girl, love vehicles. I actually worked on um, some older like 60s and 80 model vehicles, uh, rebuilding them, sports cars, trucks, things like this. And it's just something I have a passion for. So anyway, what I've moved into like a realm of is I'm starting to do these spec videos for supercars, uh, for, you know, old muscle cars things like this, um, doing reviews on them, doing spec videos. And once my insurance decides to not hate me anymore, I will be driving these beautiful things instead of being driven around. So I'm really excited about that. But yeah, that's actually where I'm at right now. I am at a Japanese import uh, rental place here in Vegas. It's called JDM Rentals. Um, I'm actually sitting upstairs right now, <laughs> hanging out with them. And then the people from import, um, hot import nights, they're, they're here as well. So yeah. That's what we're doing. So I, I think I think we have one of the promo pictures uh, from your show. Let's see, there it is, right there. Hey, that's me. <laughs> uh, huh. Atomic Saloon. Okay. Yeah. So um, I don't know if y'all can see this. I don't know. If you, you probably see me right now, hopefully. But anyway, Brandon's asking right now if I miss RCW and the Texas wrestling fans, and like, you guys have no idea how much I miss y'all. In fact, I was just talking about this um to the people from uh hot import nights i was downstairs talking to the wife of one of the people who kind of runs the whole thing um it's a it's a car show that travels but anyway so i was just talking to her and she was you know just kind of picking my brain she was like you know where are you from like what do you do yada yada and i was like i was like look i'm in circus now i'm a business owner now i was like but my heart will always be in texas i was like i'm a texas girl through and through you know born and raised obviously um, and I was like, and I just, I miss that energy. I miss that adrenaline. Like I miss coming out and just like interacting with people and hugging people and, you know, very 2020 thing to say, right? Like I miss hugging people. Um, but I do like, I, I loved it at RCW. I always felt really comfortable there. Like I always felt like I had a lot of, um, like creative control and a lot of creative outlet that I was allowed to do. Um, you know, like there's some companies you work for and you walk in and they just immediately are just like, we're, we're pegging you for like this type of person, this type of character. We want you to do this, this, and this. And it was very demanding and you, you felt suffocated. And I never felt that way. Um, especially with the fans too, because like everybody was just so chill and like so supportive and so freaking loud. Like that's the biggest thing. So like anybody watching this, just know that like wrestlers do feed off of that. Like if you're quiet our emotions and our actions are quiet. You know what I mean? So like, I love you guys. I miss y'all. Seriously. Like I really, really do. <laughs> All right. Can you hear me now or no? You still can't hear me. I can hear you. Okay. <laughs> I'm now. so glad. I'm so glad I asked that question. So you can't hear me now. Now I can. Right when you said, can you hear me? Yep. <laughs> Yay. We did it. We did it. Don't, <laughs> Over here. <laughs> All right. So, um, yeah, we're talking uh, about, uh, you know, RCW and missing the Texas wrestling fans. Yeah. I do have a couple of pictures to bring up. Um, I like that one of you with the belt. Me too. It's the yellow pants, isn't it? Yes. That was awesome. And I, I liked your um, post the other day. You said that um, uh, you need to grow or the title needs to get smaller. <laughs> Yeah, maybe I should be like a few inches taller or something. <laughs> um, you know, but you were right, uh, you know, in terms of, of the creativity that you had. Um, you did some outstanding stuff. This is one of my favorites. This is the uh, the birthday cake shot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, my God. I freaking forgot about this. And my what? birthday just passed, too. So it's like perfect timing for you to put that up. Yeah. And that was, I mean, that was all you. I mean, that was kind was of like, your idea. Me up. <laughs> that was your idea, wasn't it? I think it was. Yeah. Am I allowed to try to say the F word? Sorry. It's okay. We're, 
Just don't everybody say it too much. <laughs> yeah, so everybody gets watching. Mess me up, yo. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And then another one of my favorites, you underneath Fala Bong. Um, oh, I'm glad it's one of your favorites. <laughs> As I'm suffocating and dying down there. <laughs> I mean, oh, okay, again, whose idea was that? Oh, God. Who? Okay, so actually, I think that, okay, it was like me, Paula, and maybe Colt Cabana were like talking this over. And uh, we were just like, what is something insane that we can do that is just like, is going to shock people? Today, I am a girly girl. I think that's pretty obvious. Like, I'm a tomboy, but like, I'm pretty girly as well. So, like, I feel like sometimes I do miss out on a lot of like the riskier type things in the in the ring, and I get that. So, I was just like, I want that shock factor, you know. And Paula was like, I can jump onto your chest, and I was like, I'm sorry, what? And he was like, Yeah, he was like, I literally am just gonna like sit out and fucking. I'm sorry. He was like, I'm just gonna sit out. I'm gonna crush you. And I was like. But okay, this is my last day on earth. Got it. <laughs> like, I was low key terrified. Um, but I will say, and people may or may not want to hear this, whatever, but like, that was one of the lightest flops I've ever felt in my entire life. Like, I've had girls weigh 20 pounds less than I do who have hurt me worse. And I don't know if that's just like a really bony foot. He's got some cushion for the pushing. I don't know. But like, he totally did not hurt me on that. You know what's funny? is when he, when I jumped on him like a little monkey and he ran me back into the turnbuckle, that was the most painful thing of the entire match. Hands down. <laughs> like I had I had like a cut across my back. I had bruises everywhere. Legit had to go to the chiropractor the next day. <laughs> I was like, so it wasn't that that did it. It was that that did it. Like really? <laughs> um, wrestling, wrestling's so funny like that. You know that. Like that's that's what's so funny about wrestling. Like the things you don't expect are what like really hurt you. Uh, yeah, without question. And I follow Bob. He's so great, isn't he? He is fantastic. Like I don't know if we had really interacted before that day, to be honest. Um, but I just had such a fantastic time working with him, and he was so polite and energetic and fun, and was just so open to ideas. And yeah, cannot like commend him enough, honestly. And then I got to bring up one of my favorite trios of all time, uh, Barbie. I mean, I, think I, know what I, I would say this this goes um, like against the Freebirds as far as tree, uh, trios go, as far as three oh. people. And that is yeah. this team right here. Ah, yes, my girl. <laughs> I, I, that is like one of the greatest trios ever assembled. You, Christy Jane, Scarlett Bordeaux. I mean, you know, that's a that's a damn good team. It really was. Like, I'm sad that it came when it did because that was, like, during the time that I was kind of leaving wrestling. So I am really sad that we didn't get to, like, keep doing that. And then, of course, now, you know, Christy did work with AEW and she's doing stuff on the West Coast. And, you know, Scarlett obviously is with WWE now. So I'm just, like, I'm glad we got to, like, sneak that in really quick before everybody just, like, dipped out, you know? Like, I'm really, really excited about that. Like, I'm really happy yeah. about that because I love both of those girls. Um, and also, it's cool, too, because, like, even though I would say our personas and our attitude really mesh, which is why, you know, I think we made a good trio, um, we are all so diverse in the way that we wrestle and, like, the things that we do in the ring. So I think that's what was so cool. It's like, on one plane, we really, we really, really clicked. And then on another, we just brought, like, we all had our different style and flavor that we brought for different fans, you know? You know, I'm I'm gonna pat the booker on the back on that one, which is myself. Uh -huh. because, uh -huh. <laughs> because it was you three uh against Rebel Katie and Gail Kim. And yeah. again, one of my favorite uh moments really ever in RCW. I mean, that was the big brawl that you and Katie had outside the ring. Yeah. I mean, you know, that to me again, double pat on the back. Because yes, that was that a great. Was, that was so much fun. Like, that was, I think that one was one of my favorites, too, because I was trained very, very, very old school. Um, I was the only girl 
until Jordan Grace came into the picture, I was the only girl at my school um, for like the first like year or two. And, you know, something they, they taught us, they were really like big on was going out there and not planning anything, like just seeing what organically happened. Um, and that was one of those matches where we just let it organically happen. And it ended up being such a fun time. Like we even went outside of the building and had people follow us out there and we like fought on a trailer and we were all over the stage. We were through the crowd. Um, I mean, we definitely both got clocked a few times, like solid hits. Um, we were definitely sore afterward, but just so freaking happy with like how fun it was. You know what I mean? Cause like there, there were some like real scuffle moments in that, which was really cool. Yeah, definitely. And, and then also, uh, we're going down memory lane here. I'm sorry, Barbie. <laughs> no. no, it's I mean, hey, I'm here for it. <laughs> uh, the first the, podcast I have taken, uh, the first, I've had other like offers for like you know, podcast interviews, yada, yada, yada. This is the first one I've taken in the last 18 months. Yeah. <laughs> so it is all good. Um, it's all good to go down memory lane. <laughs> you know, another opportunity. I mean, I know you've been on TV. Uh, but we got to do another opportunity where uh, we got you and Katie to kind of do like a little bit of PR for RCW. Any, any memories of that? Oh, my God. This was so chaotic. Um, so it was like so classy. The photo you see where, our, you know, like we're with the, uh, the male and female. This was for Fox over in San Antonio. And... It was like such a great experience. Everyone was so professional and polite and they had a great dressing room for us. And then we go to this radio show. Maybe I'm having those backwards, but I think we went to the radio show maybe after. But oh my God, it was just pure chaos. Like we were chopping people, we were spanking people, like there were threats thrown around. <laughs> it was like pure chaos. And I was like, I'm living for this. And it was so off the cuff, too. Like, we really didn't know what we were getting ourselves in. We, like, kind of threw us to the wolves. We were just like, let your personality shine, guys. Um, that was one of, probably one of the best radio interviews I've ever done. And one of the better, uh, like, TV uh, interviews I've done. I think my favorite one was over in Mexico. And it was for, like, their ESPN, like, Mexico's ESPN. And I had a freaking blast there. And then I went to that one in San Antonio, and I was like, okay. These are even. These win. They're tied. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, like, we were just spanking people, like literally for that radio show. Like we're just like annihilating these people. So the the female reporter, the the the, the girl um, on that yes. Fox show, Kimberly Crawford. I was I was hoping that you and Katie could convince her to you know start wrestling or <laughs> or to be like a valet or something. Um, she's made that, that would have been a good tie-in right like she's so she, uh, i wish i had known that like i would have been like look we need you okay you're a hot chick banging bod great personality very sassy oh she would have been perfect <laughs> and then those radio guys so we had a good relationship with them and you're right they yeah. the billy madison show is what they're called and that's, and they're very it. very crazy and the host, yes. Billy Madison, he uh, he retired as the perfect RCW champion. He won the championship in one match. Very next yeah. show, he retired as the perfect champion. So he'll go down in history. Undefeated. Brilliant. <laughs> That's the oh. way to go out. I think I did the same thing. Didn't I go out as champion? Wasn't I just like, see ya? <laughs> yeah, actually, that was my next picture, Barbie, was uh, your your last night. And that was from your speech from the last night. Uh, do you want to talk about that? Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> this is where no. I get the tears. I, God, I can't give you tears right now. I can't. I, I, I have to hold them in because I really, I have to go downstairs and film right after this. I've got to fuck it up. Oh, but that was. Uh, there's not even words for it. Like that drive there, I was just such an emotional wreck. The night before I couldn't sleep. Um, whenever I went to go grab my phone, I think like literally I have not shaken more in my life. Like I literally was just like my hand was just vibrating. I was just like, am I really doing this? Like this has been my entire life. 
literally since I left high school, I started wrestling three days after I left high school. I graduated on a Friday and started wrestling on Monday. Um, and it's all I've known. My entire adulthood has been wrestling. Um, and so it was, it was scary and sad. And, you know, and I wanted to do it there because I felt so at home at RCW and I felt like so loved by fans there and by the locker room as well, which is a big deal because, you know, sometimes that those aren't the same. <laughs> but there it was. And I felt comfortable saying my goodbyes there. Um, because I felt like A, people would actually care, like as much as I cared. And I don't know, I didn't even have anything planned on what I wanted to say. Um, I think that at one point before I even went to church, I was probably crying. I think like you and a few other people like were hugging me and you were just like, You can do this, you got this. Like I didn't know like I don't think fans realize that I almost didn't even want to go out of the curtain. Like I I had that moment where like I didn't know if I could make it out of the curtain because I was just so sad and anxious and you know no one knew that I was like no one really really knew that I was like saying goodbye because like in wrestling you know people will like say goodbye they'll retire uh they're back next week or next month you know the next year or whatever it is um so yeah it really just felt like I was shutting off my adulthood like as I had known it my livelihood my dreams um, because I can still remember sitting at a WWE event. Uh, I got taken on a date and I was sitting there watching these beautiful, strong women in the ring. And I knew nothing about wrestling. I, I didn't watch it growing up or anything like that. And I'm sitting there watching it and I had like a tear in my eye. I was just so inspired. And just wanted to do what they did. And I even looked at my date. Like I literally just turned to him and I said, this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. I want to do this. And he didn't believe me, um, but I did. You know, I, I ended up doing that for 10 years. And it's incredible. It 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 changed my life being a wrestler. Like, it, it changed my perspective on life. It, it changed my, in, you know, my goals, my drive. Uh, it wasn't easy, but it was definitely, definitely worth it, for sure. <laughs> definitely. And I'm so, I mean... I know it's bittersweet, you know, and, and, yeah. and one hand to say that I'm very thankful it happened in RCW, um, yeah. you know, that, it, that you chose RCW as the place, you know, but it's also, you know, I know, it's, like I said, it's bittersweet because I know it's sad to leave something that you've known, you know, yeah. for a good part of your life. So Yeah, um, like I had comfort in wrestling because I, like, I knew it. I knew, like, where I wanted to develop my character and, like, you know, yada, yada, yada. I was in circus. You know, I never, never thought I would be in circus. Never thought I'd work in Las Vegas Strip, which is insane still because the people I work with are so incredibly talented at, 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 at you know, Spiegel World and everything through Absinthe, Atomic, Opium. I literally sit back in time and I look at them and I'm just like, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, it's insane. I'm like, how did, how, why am I here? How did I get here? I'm just a girl from Texas. Like, <laughs> why am I here? <laughs> right. You know, well, you've definitely worked hard to, to get where you're at, and so mm -hmm. you know, again, yeah. thank you very much for everything you did in RCW and and uh, you know, for Texas wrestling here. And thank uh, you. you know, we like I said, that's why I was like, the first half of this thing, or probably first two thirds, is just catching up and yeah, right. <laughs> and finding out how you're doing because you're always doing these really cool things. So, <laughs> you know, can, can I show this real quick? Uh, so these are some new, some uh, brand new photos, the modeling shots. And I was like, oh my gosh, Barbie Hayden. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> Just absolutely killing it. Unbelievable. Oh, There's so. actually a funny story behind that as well, because I am not a, I'm not a model. Like I've done some brand modeling, but like overall it's been wrestling, it's been podcasts, it's been interviewing you know, um, things like this, doing commentary, whatever. And I got picked to do um, like this interview and try out for a show with Polly Shore. Um, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with who Polly Shore is. You know, he was a, a comedian, like big time comedian, like celebrity in all these movies and things, especially in the 90s. He just came off another movie uh, a couple months ago. Anyway, I was there with him interviewing. It just didn't work out. Like, just you know, just didn't click, whatever. And he was like, you know what? He was like, even though we have what we want to use, 
come back to my house. We're having a pool party. You're invited. Like, come chill, you know, meet people. And I was like, okay, cool. And I knew my friend Emily was there. Um, Emily's a dancer here in Vegas. She goes to, like, clubs and stuff. It's really cool. Like, this club close the bar and a stage comes out on top of it. And then, like, guys and girls do, like, dancing. Like, dancing. And stuff. It's really sick. She got picked by the bar, which is really cool. Anyway, she was there. I went there, met all these people, met this girl named Liddy, who, uh, you know, she's an actress and model and stuff. And she was like, you know what? She was like, you kind of look like a model. Why don't you come to this, like, modeling event this weekend at this mansion? And I'll get you introduced to people, whatever, yada, yada. And I was like, oh, God. Like, I'm a model. Right. So I show up. And I was so overwhelmed because Liddy couldn't even make it to the shoot. So I'm sitting there by myself not knowing any of these people uh and i walk in and i'm talking, there are probably like 50 models walking around and these girls are knocked out they are stunning okay and they know what they're doing and i went to the bathroom and started like crying like i locked myself in the bathroom because i was so scared i was like why am i here how did i get here why did i get invited i don't know what i'm doing i almost leave um and then I met this guy named Helen, who is a, a videographer for MGM. He does MGM nightlife, you know, videotaping. And he, you know, was just like, yo, I'll help you. I'll walk you through this. And I was like, okay, bet. So anyway, that's my story of getting into, into modeling was I went to this thing with Holly Shore. It failed. Got invited to his house party. Met a chick. She loved me. She sent me to this thing. I started doing modeling. Met this videographer who is so great, freaking fantastic. And now he's my videographer for the company that I own. And we're also starting a vlog here, like a, a you know, a vlog series on YouTube covering cars, nightlife, um, events, like the thing that y'all probably see on my Instagram the other day where I was holding like a giant bazooka, uh, like a giant like rocket launcher thing. Um, they do like these crazy events here where you can go out into the mountains and just like shoot. And then you can drink and you have a house party at a mansion and there's like strippers and there's poker and very Vegas. Uh, so we're doing this vlog series now that hasn't launched yet. So if you're looking for it, it hasn't launched yet. Uh, but just covering basically what you can do in Las Vegas if you have like no clue. And if you don't just want to do the typical stuff, like, you know, obviously shows are shut down for the most part right now. So shows are kind of out of the question. Big clubs like Omnia and stuff, those are out of the question. Uh, so yeah, I'm like, I'm super stoked because it's cool how I went for this, this like movie part and it failed. I'm talking like, I almost got up and left in the middle of the interview because it was going so terribly. <laughs> so it led from that to a modeling gig. I cried in the bathroom and almost left, met a great videographer. And now I'm starting like a vlog series covering nightlife and things to do in Las Vegas. So it's cool. It's cool. All these things like snowball into each other so i'm hoping people like watching this by the way like understand that you do have to fail like you just you have to like it just, it just happens but it's cool because usually those failures will lead to a better thing anyway and like something that you want to actually do and you're passionate about so <laughs> all right so so on remarkable wrestling podcast barbie we talk about like some of the things that you know we've kept either before when we were just wrestling fans or, you know, once we got into the business, things we kept it. I, I've been pretty good about keeping stuff uh, for mine. Like I got the guitar that Jeff Jarrett hit me over the head with. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. you know, so I've been, I've been pretty good about like, you know, after the show, like, you know, what, I'll hold on to this just in case. Um, but so, so what things do you, do you remember or do you have or that you kept? Uh, that mean a lot to you just from, you know, maybe before your career or during it? Okay, so I'm really going to show, uh, <laughs> really going to show my ass here. And uh, I'm sure he's going to watch this back now and be like, oh, no. Uh, but whenever I first got introduced to wrestling, you know, I was 17, I would say. I think that's whenever I started watching, started wrestling at 18. So clearly I loved it. Um, but whenever I started watching wrestling, I immediately gravitated towards Edge, uh, Dean Malenko, Randy Orton, 
Um, and my, my biggest one really was Chris Jericho. Like I just, I don't know why I just loved him. You know, I would say him and Ed were definitely my biggest, like, you know, influences and people that I just loved. Um, but anyway, <laughs> I remember always searching for like Chris Jericho action figures for like the jerseys, um, like the YTJ, you know, jerseys literally anything that I could get that had like Chris Jericho association with it. I was just like, I need this. Like I have to buy this. Every time WWE had like a sale on their website, I bought like all this merch that was like his or edges, you know, whatever. Uh, and this is it's funny because I, I don't, I sadly don't have these things anymore. Um, we'll get into that story in a second as to why I don't actually have these things physically to show you guys. But anyway, it's funny now because like fast forward, Chris is now one of my like closest friends. Like we text probably weekly. He's again, like I know I was just putting over Ricky Stark. So it looks like I'm just promoing people here, but, uh, and it looks like I'm promoing AEW as well. But anyways, uh, Chris ha has now become one of my closest friends. And that was because we met at the access, like uh, AXS access TV studios over in California. I was doing an interview for uh, Talk is Jericho for WOW Superheroes, which is, you know, the TV show that I worked for, uh, Genie Buses, WOW Superheroes. And I just remember, like, us meeting, and we just, like, immediately hit it off. Like, we just, like, immediately became friends. And went and got drinks that night, hung out, like, you know, just kicked back, like, had a good time. And we have been friends ever since. And so it's just cool because this was somebody that, like, I was buying his action figures, and I was buying his jerseys. And I remember like sweating bullets before I met him before this interview because I was like, I was like, how am I interviewing with Chris Jericho right now? Like, what what is life? You know, like I was blown away. So it's cool that now, you know, now we're friends. Um, I don't know if I can jump in. Can I just like jump into like the next thing? I think you said three. Yeah, like I just want to say real about. quick, I guess I wore the right shirt then. <laughs> right. Yeah, go right go right into the next one. Okay. Um uh, so I would say I would say the the next one, uh, this is something kind of funny. It happened really, really early on. Um uh, a lot of people are probably familiar with my my finishing move, which is the hangman DDT or a uh, Hayden Halo DDT. It's a uh, top rope punk DDT where my opponent's feet are on the top rope. So this all developed when I was first starting because I wasn't big enough to really like do any crazy like power moves but i wasn't so small that doing like a lot of flippy stuff made sense either because i was strong but i was small so i needed something that could be used on anybody but i had no idea what i wanted to do like not a clue uh, when i was super super new i was working in north texas and uh with with my ex at the time who you know he was a wrestler as well and we were working there and ended up getting paired up with jake the snake and of course, again, my mind is just exploding into a million pieces because I was like, how am I this greenhorn just getting on to, you know, getting onto the scene, not knowing anybody, not really having any, any connections. And I get put into a program working with Jake the Snake, you know, like he worked as our mentor. Um, he had an angle where he was, you know, going against like, he was going against my ex. I was valeting at the time, not really wrestling too much because I was still really new. And there weren't a lot of girls back then, mind you. This was back in like, you know, 2010, uh, 2011. Like there just weren't a whole lot of girls on the indies. Uh, so anyway, he was so good to us. Like he was so helpful. He helped us develop our characters and our movements and yada, yada, yada. And he was like, he, you know, he pulled us in, into the shows early so we could practice. And he was like, uh, you don't have a finishing move, do you? He was like, I literally don't see you do anything signature. Like, when you have wrestled here. There's nothing that, like, you do that's special. And I was like, oh, thanks. Appreciate that. Um, kill me now. Uh, but he was like, what, what if you did a DDT? I was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> Jake the Snake. <laughs> Uh, the one who, like, you know, invented the move. Uh, are you giving me permission to use the DDT? Uh, and he sure did. He taught me how to do it, which I thought was really, really freaking cool. Uh, fast forward, by the way, not to go on a tangent, 
But the reason why it ended up being a top rung uh, DDT was because um, Athena, now known as Ember Moon, and um, and Raven were the ones who actually suggested to me at a show that I should do one that was top rung. Like we were practicing it, we were like, "Can this work?" We were just shooting ideas back and forth, and I was like, "I want it to be extreme, like an extreme DDT." And so anyway, between the three of us, we we perfected that. So uh, to Ember Moon, thank you for letting me experiment that move on you. Thank you for being such a brilliant friend. Um, but anyway, the funniest thing about this, you're talking about how you have that guitar that Jeff Jarrett hit you over the head with. Well, Jake would have this paddle, real paddle, real wood, even had holes in it. So you get like air, you know, really swing. Um, and they had a paddle match between him and my ex. Uh, so whoever lost got paddle, like you're in grade school and you get hit on the butt, you know, whatever. And <laughs> my ex lost this match. And Jake literally just, I'm talking in the middle of the ring, just wails on him. And of course, now in hindsight, I'm like, thank you for doing that. Top notch. Um, but he just, smacked him so hard that his butt literally had the imprint of that paddle board like you saw it immediately i mean like, there were welts like he had the paddle board and even the holes like on his butt imprinted uh so jake ended up letting us keep that paddle he was like you know what he was like i'll get another one made he was like you've got to keep this he was like you took that like a, a champ he was like i just destroyed you you're bleeding a little bit <laughs> He let us keep that paddle, and uh, oh man, I wish I had these things to show you guys. They're back in Texas, so like that's why I cannot show you guys these items. I'm here in Las Vegas, but I was just like, what a great thing to keep! Like, not only did he give me permission to use the DDT and help me like perfect my movements and stuff with it, like getting permission from the man, the DDT, like, but then that paddle, oh my god. It was like the funniest thing at Christmas parties, like in stuff like that, like coming up, we were just like, like, hey, remember when Jake the Snake like ripped into you with a paddle board like a child and you had like literally the exact outline on your butt? Oh, so good. Yeah, that was that's probably one of the best things that anyone's ever given me in wrestling ever. <laughs> <laughs> for multiple I reasons, for multiple reasons now, you know. <laughs> yes. I love Jake. I've worked with Jake several times. Yeah. Um but um you know everyone remembers uh when he got one over on Boom Boom Brandon Oliver and mm -hmm. uh put the snake down my pants. Um <laughs> that a snake don't... in your pants you're just happy to see me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't ever want to hear people say I won't do anything for RCW fans because I took one for the team that night. <laughs> yeah, fair. <laughs> uh, the other thing that you brought up about Jake um, yeah. is that I'm, I'm glad he, he mentioned DDT and finishers because yes. one of the last shows he was on with me, um, he stressed how much he wanted guys to use their finishers as compared to roll-ups. Um, right. And it makes total sense. I mean, he's like, well, if you are in a real fight, and, you know, would you rather be rolled up and may look like an idiot? Or would you rather be hit with this devastating move? And that's what made you lose. Right. And it's like, yeah. <laughs> I, I totally, I totally agree. Like, and I think you're probably aware of that too. Like, I was, I was definitely one of those that, like, I didn't mind getting pinned. I was like, look, if you're going to take me out, take me out. Like, I'm good with that, you know, and, and vice versa. Like, I always make my move and. Or at least tee it up because I, I know that the RCW fans are really, really smart. Like, they stay on these things and, like, they know the build up for everyone's finisher. Like, that's what's so cool. You can just hear that roar start to go up in the crowd and you're just like, yeah. oh, it's like, you want to be, you want to hear, you know? <laughs> really cool. Nice. Yeah. He called it a cop out finish when guys use a roll up. <laughs> that's fair. So I'm like sinking into this couch. I wonder why I keep like moving into like this couch is really like smushy and so I just like <laughs> So if you see me disappear, um I'm inside of this couch, please save me. <laughs> and, and so is is that it, Barbie? Is that uh, do you have another item that's uh, I would say 
the only one that I actually do have is at home right now. Um, everywhere I go, I like to collect Starbucks um, coffee cups, the ones that like, you know, tell where you've been and, you know, things like this. Unfortunately, my move, so I, I went from Texas to Scotland to Vegas. Um, I didn't move all my stuff to Scotland for obvious reasons. Um, so my friend Preston actually sent me everything in a box to Vegas. And on the way here, all of my coffee, my coffee cups uh, broke, all of them. Like it was, I was devastated when I got the box. Like that's USPS for you. Um, uh, so what I did, like it was the handle, but the handles broke off, right? And uh, so what I did was I repurposed them into little flower pots and into water bowls for my cat. So if you walk in my house, there are just random country Starbucks coffee cups all over my house because I use them now for plants that I kill and then for my cat's water. Yeah. I never give me a plant. One of my friends here bought me a, a little cactus for my birthday and I was like, Well, I mean, it's a cactus. <laughs> you would think that would be a good reasoning for me to not kill it, but I will drown it somehow eventually by accident. Like, I don't want to kill plants, but I do. <laughs> all right. No, no judgment here, Barbie. No, none at all. None whatsoever. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> all right. So, um, let's see. So, one of the cool things about uh, Remarkable Wrestling Podcast, I'm trying to keep it where it's not like, tell me who trained you and tell me what got you in and what was your first match. And, you know, right. um, try to do some other stuff that's, you know, kind of different. Um, and so one of the things that we've been doing with, with our guests is we play like a little game. Um, a lot of it comes from the fact that I'm a huge Jimmy Fallon fan. I don't know if you watch Jimmy Fallon. Um, I did. I haven't watched TV in a long time, though. But yeah, I used to watch it religiously. So you know how, like, he brings on a guest and they play like a little game? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So that's what we're going to do right now. Um, okay. We are going to play the Whisper Challenge. And so <laughs> what I'm going to do is, you know, when it's each other's turn, uh, you know, for the person saying, it's all going to be wrestler names. And uh, so say, like, I'll go first. And so I'll okay. mute my mic and I'll say the name and you try to guess it. Oh, God. Oh, God. I'm so bad with names. Why are you doing this to me? <laughs> You're exposing my weakness to the internet. So I know, Barbie, I know that before we started, you said you didn't have a sheet of paper, but I do. So what I'm going to ask you to do, <laughs> what I'm going to ask you to do is, is turn away real quick and I'm going to show the, okay. the audience the first name. I'm going to flip it down, okay? All right. All right, you can flip it back up. <laughs> okay, I'm going to try to bring my screen up to the front so that way you can okay. see me. All right? Okay, cool. Only do it once? That's it? I could I could do it again. I could do it again. Yeah, do it again. Do it again. Sorry. Okay. What? That was a <laughs> <laughs> That was the whole last It might just be me too. I, I mean, it might just be I'm not expressive enough, but maybe that's what it is. Uh, Bam Bam Bigelow? No, not Bam Bam Bigelow. I'm trying it to was like Abilene things. Maverick. Oh come on! It's me. <laughs> yeah, I got you. I got you there. So sad. All right, so your turn now. Uh, I'm going to mute your mic. So tell me when you're ready. But I'll mute your mic, and then you say the name, and then I'll try to guess. 
Just tell me when uh, you're ready, though. Okay. Ready. Oh my god. Let me see it one more time. Okay. One more time, okay? All right. Oh my gosh. I I, I don't even know. I, I give up. I give up. What what was it? I said Eddie Guerrero. Oh okay. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> That's a good one. I All right, that let me was see. Because, because of being Texan, I can just roll right through the name. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna do another one. Okay, so go ahead and okay. turn away or turn the phone down. Oh yeah. All right, go ahead and bring it up. Okay. Here we go. All right. <laughs> Did you freeze? Oh, okay, there you are. I swear. You want it one more time? Saying, yes, I swear you're saying no. Okay. I'm going to watch it. I'm really going to watch it. All right, all right, here we go. Watch this time, watch this time. I don't even have a, I, oh my God. I don't even have a guess. I don't even have like a first syllable. I don't even know how to start it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Randy Orton? No, it's definitely not that. It's something that's way longer than that. Yeah, uh, I'll give you a hint. It's three words. The Great Khali? <laughs> no, actually, he's, he's right next to my head. It's Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Oh, G oh Jesus Christ. I never would have... Oh, I've got to make it bad. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's do one more. Let's do okay. one more, Barbie. This time you come up with a name. Okay. And, and tell me when you're ready and I'll I'll I'm uh mute it. Ready to go. Okay, I take it it's one word. Uh-huh. Is it Seamus? No. Well, what what was it? Do you want a second? Do you want to try a second guess? I mean, because you did nail that it's one word. So, like... Yeah, let's do it one more time. Tell me when you're ready. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Is it Christian? <laughs> no. Who is it? Ricochet. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, let, me new age. let me just like let me just you all you all attack Hope and Duggan, so I was like, okay, I've gotta get someone new way now. Like I gotta like really throw it off. <laughs> all right, all right, do you, do you fill up to one more? One more for me. Absolutely. <laughs> all right, hold on, let's see. I failed my own name, so I know all right, I'll give you a hint this time. Okay. It is, it, it's one word. Okay. All right. So go ahead and, and tilt your camera down real quick. Okay. It's kind of static, so let's do it. I'll go fast. All right, go ahead. Put it back up. I think it's your microphone. It's like really static. Oh, mine is? Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. Okay. Well, this is the last one. All right. Um, okay. 
Did you hear it or did you see it? No, I didn't. I showed, I, I, yeah, I <laughs> All right, I'll do it one more time. Okay. All right. The hardest thing I've ever done. Um, <laughs> give me a hint. What is the hint? Okay. Um, it's funny from the 1990s WWF. He's Native American. Tonka? No. <laughs> Oh, yep, Tatanka, you got it. <laughs> Wait, you got it. Shut up. Yeah, Tatanka. What? Yeah. <laughs> Shut up, show me. Let me see. I feel like you're lying. See? Oh. We you got it. Yeah. All right, Barbie. So this brings us to an end uh, uh, at Remarkable Wrestling Podcast. Any final words for our audience? Um, you guys, just my life is chaotic and fun and exciting. Um, movie debate has been the greatest thing I've done. I guys don't know so much wrestling. You have no idea. Um, but follow me on Instagram and on TikTok. Uh, eventually, I'll probably start announcing. You know some of the shows that I'm doing, and um, like the YouTube channel, it's going to be kind of like Las Vegas Underground. Basically, you get to kind of see it from someone who lives in Las Vegas, like a local's perspective. Um, also, featuring a lot of supercars, things like this. It's it's so cool. Um, I just launched a company. I am a private owner though, so I'm not announcing that. But uh, just hang with me. I feel like I'm always doing really cool stuff here. So hopefully, I can keep you entertained. Interact with me. Um, I would love to you know see comments, likes, whatever. That we have to interact back with you guys. If you ever have any questions, uh, toss them to me on like my last post. And yeah, I hope to talk to y'all soon. I hope you enjoyed this. <laughs> All right, Barbie, thank you so much again, and uh, we'll see you. We'll see you really soon. All right, bye. All right, so that was Barbie Hayden. Uh, sorry about the audio issues for this episode. We'll try to clean it up and maybe rebroadcast it. But uh, again, just want to thank you all for watching. We'll next, announce our next guest uh, pretty soon. Um, but for now, um, we'll be back in two weeks, not next Sunday, uh, but the Sunday after. And uh, want to uh, wish all of you a happy Halloween. And reminder, go out there and vote. And uh, we'll see you in uh, two weeks. And hello, everyone. It's time for another edition of the Remarkable Wrestling Podcast. And if you're watching, you know, say hello. Eventually, I do want to film a really cool intro for the Remarkable Wrestling Podcast on 1980s style, where it's like, hey, we're going to be talking about all the collectibles and all the memories and all the stuff that makes us professional wrestling fans. This is such good shit. Look at that little clip squeak. Look at that from the WWE fan club. Ultimate Warrior wristbands. I was like, you like wrestling? I was like, hell yeah, I do. It was Lumberjack Jim, my made-up wrestler. Think Hacksaw Jim Duggan, just Lumberjack. Did you use a backbreaker in a fight at Grand Oaks? He runs a promotion for his lunch break. <laughs> <laughs> that, that one cracks me up. The Remarkable Wrestling Podcast. What the world is watching.